good morning students welcome back to maths classes and hope you all are fine at home and you have gone through the topics which i taught you already that means ratio and proportion so last class we have seen the proportion as well as continue proportion and we were solving the questions related with the proportion right today again we are continuing with the proportion only and today we will see one of the another method for solving the proportional questions that is k method k method of solving the proportional questions k method means you will have some conditions given some quantities some quantities means some proportions given that means if x upon a equal to y upon b equal to z upon c similarly some types of ratios will be given if x upon a equal to y upon b equal to z upon c this is given and with this given quantity you have to prove some topics some questions given that means you will have lh side as well as rh side and by using this condition this is the condition given if these ratios are equal if these ratios are in proportion x upon a equal to y upon b equal to z upon c then prove that then prove that there will be question if you are having the textbook you can go through from question number 16 onwards you can see x upon a equal to y upon b equal to is that upon c then prove that what is prove that given x cube upon a cube plus y cube upon a square given y cube upon b square plus is that cube upon c square is equal to x plus y plus z whole cube upon denominator it is a plus b plus c the whole square right so did you understand the question that means you are having a pair of ratios which are in proportion given by using the k method we are going to solve these questions by using the k method now how can we apply the k method that is we are going to see now the given ratio this is our given ratio x upon a equal to y upon b equal to z upon c so this given ratio we will equate it into the constant k that is k method did you understand the given ratio what is given in the question that given ratio you will equate it into a constant k so if you are equating x upon a equal to k if you are equating x upon a equal to k what will you get x upon a equal to k you are equating means x will be equal to a k right similarly if you are equating y upon b equal to k implies y will be equal to bk right yes and z upon c again you are equating that means z will be equal to ck so we got the three values for x y z x is equal to ak y will be equal to bk and z will be equal to ck right now this is our question prove that this lh side is equal to rh side so you will prove this by using the values of x y z our values of x y z are given there right so that values we will write in the place of x what will you write in the place of x you will write a k whole cube right upon a square similarly b k whole cube upon b square c k whole cube upon c square that is equal to rh side also the same 
same thing you will do. You will equate x as a k plus b k plus c k whole q upon upon a plus b plus c the whole square. Right? Now you are going to simplify it. What will you get? What will you get? You will get it as a q k q upon a square. Right? Plus b q k q upon b square. Plus c q k q upon c square. Now, if you are simplifying LHS side, a cube and a square will cancel. And you are getting, what is getting in the LHS side? A k cube plus B k cube plus C k cube. Remaining cancel. Among these three, you can take k cube common. Then what is remaining? A plus B plus C. This is your LHS side we got. Further, no more simplification. Similarly, if you are going to the RHS side, RHS side you can see K is common in all these three terms with a power 3. K is common in this first term as well as second term and third term with the power 3. So, if you are taking out the common term outside the power also you have to take. So, K cube we have taken common as outside. Remaining will be A plus B plus C the whole cube upon A plus B plus C the whole square. Now, this is common. Right? It will cancel. And finally, RHS side also you are getting K cube into A plus B plus C. So, have you got LHS equal to RHS? Both the sides you got the same answer. Therefore, you can write LHS equal to RHS and hence prove. Hence prove the question. So, this is K method. K method in terms of proportion. We have two types of proportion. Second proportion is continued proportion. One is normal proportion, the equality of ratios. That is what we have seen now. And we are going to see the case of continued proportion also by using K method. There is a slight difference with both. Okay. So, this is the concept of K method of solving the proportional questions. What to do? You have a pair of ratios in proportion given. So, the given proportion, you will equate it into the constant K. And from that, from that, you will take the value of, either you can take A value or you can take X value. But better, we will go for the numerator value. So, you will take the values of one of the term in terms of K. One of the term, either you can take X as A, K. Or you can take A as X upon K. Both are correct. And one that one variable in the given question, wherever you are having that variable, you will substitute that variable's value in terms of K. And then after substituting what to do? You will simplify. You will simplify it. Then both the sides, after simplification, you will get both the sides, say, LHS is equal to RHS. So, that is K method of solving the proportional questions. So, I think it is clear to you. Okay, and while going through, you can see the last question, question number 23, as well as question number 22. The last two, uh, last two or three questions are lengthy. Lengthy means if you are taking more than a page. That type of questions is not important. Not important means that type of questions will not come in the examination. So, if a question comes from K method, it will be a simple question. For 
the familiarity of the textbooks for publishers they can publish any type of questions so uh, this 23 last year for one fifth part as well as 22 or so that are little lengthy questions so lengthy questions you can avoid but you have to study the k method as well as the solving procedure of k method so just to note down this question this is question number 16 of your exercise 7.2 Exercise 7.2 that only we were solving last class. The continuation only 7.2. Question number 16, the first part I have solved. Question number 16, the first part. Okay. And question number 16, all these three parts we will solve by using the same. X upon A equal to Y upon B equal to Z upon C equal to K. Then you will get the value of X as well as Y and Z. And wherever you are having x, there you will substitute the new value as well as y also, z also. Then you will simplify LHS sign as well as you will simplify the RHS sign. After simplification, you can reach into a common term on both the sides. And afterwards you cannot cancel it and write it as 1 is to 1. No. Up to the final value, you have to write simplified form and then you have to write it as LHS equal to RHS. No doubt. Question number 16, first part. Second and third part, question number 16. Second and third part you can do as homework. Okay? 17 also same only. Have you seen question number 17? What is given? A upon B equal to C upon D equal to E upon F. A upon B equal to C upon D equal to E upon F. Then what will you do? You will equate let A upon B equal to C upon D equal to E upon F equal to K. Then you will get the value of A, B, sorry A, C and E in terms of K. A, C and E in terms of K. Then whatever is given LHS and RHS you will substitute. And simplify, finally you will get like this, LHS equal to RHS. Alright? Okay, now I am going to uh, solve question number 17, third part. Question number 17, third part by using K method. number 70 third part so what is given there also there also it is given a upon b so you will substitute a upon b equal to c upon d equal to e upon f equal to k you will substitute the given ratio given proportion equal to a constant k now what to do you will take the values of a, C and E in terms of K. A, C and E in terms of K. Right? So what will you get there? You will get A as then A will be B K. C will be D K. And E will be F K. E will be equal to F K. Right? Now we are going to solve the question. That is given A square upon B square plus C square upon D square plus E square upon F square is equal to RHS side given AC upon BD AC upon BD plus CE upon df plus ae upon bf ae upon bf this is the question given question number 17 
third part. Same procedure. In the place of A, you will substitute the value of A. What is our A? B, K. So, we are going to write B square, K square upon B square. Plus, D square, K square upon D square. Plus, F square, K square upon F square. So, if you are simplifying the LHS side, you can see all these three, K square is common or you can cancel it. This without the, uh, taking the common, you can cancel it. What will you get? B square, B square, D square, D square, F square, F square. What is remaining? K square plus K square plus K square. What will you get? 3 K square. So, LHS side we are getting the answer as 3 K square. If you are taking K square common outside then also 1 plus 1 plus 1 is remaining there after cancellation. So, 3 K square. 1 plus 1 plus 1 is 3. So, 3 K square will come in LHS side. Similarly, if you are going to the RHS side you know B K D K upon B K D K upon B D plus D K F K upon D F plus B K F K upon B F. What will happen? B and D will cancel. D F will cancel. B F will cancel. Finally, you are getting K square plus K square plus K square. In R H side also you are getting K square plus K square plus K square. Finally, you are getting the 3 K square. So, both LHS side as well as RHS side. Once one side is solved and got means you have to be shifted to that term in the other side too. So, you are getting 3 K square equal to 3 K square. LHS equal to RHS. Hence, proved. Hence, proved. Okay. So, these are the Questions related with the K method of proportion. K method related with the proportion. Okay. Now down this question also. Alright, now we are going to, as I have told you, we are having one more type of proportion that is continued proportion. And we are having the K method for continued proportion too. But the difference is that continued proportion you know, the denominator is repeating as the numerator for the second term. So the difference is that if you are taking out the continued proportion question, there is a slight difference for taking the values of A, B, C and all in terms of K. That I will tell you. Remaining procedure is same. Same as what we have seen now. That means if you are having a continued proportion. Suppose A, B, C, D are in continued proportion given. A, B, C, D. Four terms are in continued proportion. So... You are going to write the proportional term as this in continued proportion given. So, A upon B equal to B upon C equal to C upon D. Right? So, this is the proportional term. And this is in continued proportion. And this continued proportion we are going to equate it into a constant K. Same. And here... We will start from the last term proportion. We will equate. That means you will take C upon D as K. Then what will be your C? C will be equal to DK. And 
and then we are going to take the next one b upon c equal to k then what will be your b b will be equal to c k but we are having a value for c what is the value for c c is d k so that you will substitute here so you are getting d k into k as d k square clear and then we are going to the first term a upon b equal to k then what will be a a will be equal to b k now what is our value of b our value of b is d k square that you will substitute that is d k square into k you will get it as d k q interesting topic no okay so continued proportion you will start from the final the last proportion you will start from the last one if a b c only a b c given means a upon b equal to b upon c here you can apply both the method last class we have seen if a b c are in continued proportion then we can write b square equal to ac or this the same thing you will equate it into k then b will be equal to ck a will be equal to ck square right same thing only and that is what i told we were solving few question question number 14 13 and all this all you can use by solving by using the k method also you can solve there is no problem okay so any method you can apply a b c are in continued proportion either you can try to b square equal to a c and then you can solve or you can apply here the k method okay and substitute the value after taking the value substitute it in lhs and rhs so only the difference you have to find out the difference is in continued proportion in normal proportion there is no problem we will start from the beginning itself and equate it into k there is no problem but in continued proportion as the numerator comes as the denominator comes as the numerator of the second ratio we will start equating the k part from the last ratio it's only then you have to listen and last ratio in terms of dk you are getting means the other two also you will get in terms of dk only last one is dk then b is dk square and a is dk q so only difference and the simplification part is same wherever you are having c you will substitute dk wherever you are having b substitute there dk square and a substitute there dk q so on lhs side as well as rhs side simplify then you will get lhs equal to rhs this is k method of solving problems related with the continued proportion to so we are going to see the continued proportion one or two questions related with the continued proportion you can take out the question number 22 question number 22 okay the concept is clear no so there it is given question number 22 given a b c are in continued proportion only a b c are in continued proportion given a b and c question number 22 okay first part we are going to solve a b c are in continued proportion means a by b equal to b by c so we will equate this let a by b equal to b by c equal to k you are going to equate it with a constant k then we will start from the last one b equal to c k a equal to b k that is equal to c k into k implies c k square right so this is b value b value we are substituting there okay now we are going to take out the first question first question lhs side is given a plus b upon 
B plus C is equal to A square into B minus C upon B square into A minus B. So, this is the question given. Alright. Now, what to do? In the place of A, you will substitute C K square. So, C K square plus C K upon C K plus C. Did you understand? In the place of A, we have the value C K square. So, that you will substitute. In the place of B, we took the value C K. In terms of K, we are having A and B value. Where we have substituted. Similarly, R to side also. A square. A square means C K square whole square. Into B minus C. C K minus C. Upon B square. C K square. Into A minus B. A is C K square minus C K. Substituted LHS as well as RHS. Now we are going to simplify. K is common. C is common. And remaining here K plus 1. Upon C is common. K plus 1. So after taking out the common terms. C and C as well as K plus 1. K plus 1 will cancel. LHS side you are getting only K. Right? Similarly, R this side if you are simplifying C square K power 4 into C into K minus 1. From here you are taking C common. Okay? And here denominator C square K square into C square K square into C K is common. C K into K minus 1. Now, cancel the common terms. C square, C square cancel. C, C cancel. K minus 1, K minus 1 cancel. And here you are having K power 3. Numerator you are having K power 4. 1 K will remain in the numerator. So, you are getting K equal to K. LHS equal to RHS. Our question is prove that. Prove that means you can see LHS and RHS different concepts are given. And by looking at a glance we cannot say that these two are equal. So our question is prove that these two are equal by using the K method. And we are taking the values of A, B and all whatever is there in terms of K. Then you will substitute it in the LHS side as well as RHS side. We will simplify. After simplification, whatever the cancelled terms, you can cancel there. And then the final answer, both the sides, you will get the same. Then you can write LHS equal to RHS, hence proof. LHS equal to RHS, no doubt. Question number 22, first part. Question number 22, first part. Okay, LHS and RHS equal. Now here we have seen only three terms. A, B, C are in continued proportion. And in question number 23 you can see A, B, C, D are in continued proportion. There as I have told you, we have to take it from the last ratio. A, B, C, D are in continued proportion given. So, I am going to show that talk, that term A, B, C, D. Okay. A, B, C, D. Question number 23, first part. 
A, B, C, D are in continued proportion. That means you will write A, let. This is also the part of your solution only. So you have to write in the beginning this part. Okay. A upon B equal to B upon C equal to C upon D equal to K. Right? Then you will take C upon D equal to K implies C equal to DK. Then B upon C equal to K implies B equal to CK that is DK square. CK, C's value is DK. Right? And A upon B equal to K implies A equal to BK that means DK cube. I have explained to this topic now. This concept I have explained. And that part, this one, that also the part of your solution that you have to show in the beginning. Okay. As here we are having some space problem. That's why I have solved you in that side only. You have to take that concept also with the solution. Now we are going to solve a question related with the A, B, C, D continued proportion. A, B, C, D are a continued proportion. So, question number 23. Okay, A, B, C, D are in continued proportion given. So, we have taken the values of A, B and C in terms of K. So, you are getting A as DK cube, B as DK square and C as DK. Now, we are going to solve question number 23, the second part of the question. Question number 23, the second part you can take. A square minus B square. A square minus B square into C square minus D square. C square minus D square is equal to B square minus C square the horn square. So you can see the terms given in LHS side as well as RHS side. A square minus B square into C square minus D square is equal to B square minus C square the whole square. We are going to substitute the values. A is DK cube whole square minus B is DK square whole square. This is the first bracket. And C square. C square is D square K square minus D square. We are going to solve the LHS first. Okay. And you are solving this means D square K power 6. Right. Minus D square K power 4 into D square K square minus D square. And here if you are taking common, D square is common, K power 4 is common. And remaining will be K power 2 minus 1. Clear? And here also you are having D square common. But it is remaining K square minus 1. Clear? So, if you are taking off the whole term, multiplying, you are getting d power 4, k power 4, k square minus 1 whole square. This is your LHS side you are getting. d power 4, k power 4, k square minus 1 whole square. Right? Now, RHS side we are going to take. RHS side is given as, RHS side is given as, b square minus c square the whole square. b square minus c square the whole square. Substituting the value. What is b square? dk square whole square minus dk whole square and power 2 common. That is equal to d square k power 4 minus d square k square whole square. Right? 
and if you are taking the common term, you are having d square k square d square k square with the power 2. With the power 2 is common. What is remaining? Remaining will be k square minus 1 whole square. And if you are expanding this, you are getting d power 4, k power 4, k square minus 1 whole square. Did you get your LHS and RHS equal? d power 4, k power 4, k square minus 1 whole square. Right? So we are getting LHS as well as RHS equal. So this is the concept related with the continued proportion and you can see very rarely only questions are coming and if questions come means, questions came means question number 20. You can see that question is also solving within 3 or 4 steps. Question number 20 to the last part. That is also after solving. Like this only simple questions only will come in the examination. Within 5, 6 lines you will be getting the answer. So this is the concept of K method of solving the proportional questions. Solving proportional questions by using K method. Right? What to do? Whatever the concepts given, whatever the ratio given, the ratios you will equate it into K, the constant K. And you will take one of the quantity in terms of other, in terms of K. X upon A equal to or A upon B equal to B upon C. And in the case of continued proportion only, we will start from the last ratio and there you will get all the other values in terms of 1. We are getting here you can see, we are getting A, B, C values in terms of D, K. Powers are different. But we are getting the values of A, B, C in terms of D, K. Right? And that DK values, ABC values, we are substituting in LHS side as well as RHS side and simplify. Finally, you will be getting LHS equal to RHS. Hence, proved LHS equal to RHS. So, this is the concept of K method. Clear? K method of solving the proportional questions. K method of solving the continued proportional questions. Both the cases I have explained now. Only the difference is that continued proportion we will start from the last ratio. Continued proportion we will start from the last ratio. And the remaining all terms we will make in terms of the last quantity. In terms of DK. And the question whatever given. You will substitute LHS side as well as RHS side. Simplify. Finally, you will get both LHS equal to RHS. That is proportional cases. Clear? So, now down this question. Question number 23, second part. Question number 23, second part. Okay, children. Okay, these are the concepts related with the K method of solving the proportional questions. Okay, and you will be solving from question number 17, question number 17 to 23. You will be solving the first three questions only. Question number 17 to 23. Solve the first three questions. Ask homework. 17 to 23, the first three questions do pass homework. Alright?
As I have told you, the upcoming topics are not so easy for you. Many of the topics are new for you. So, you have to go through the concepts daily. Don't keep it on pending, pending. Finally, you won't be able to solve. Because we are not in uh, contact with each other. And whatever I am teaching, if you didn't follow it daily, later you will be facing a lot of problems. So, please go through the topics daily. Clear it. As in the case of ratio and proportion many topics we have seen already the composition of ratios word problems related with ratios then proportion properties of proportion then uh, uh, continued proportion k method solving different types of questions we have seen and one more important term is remaining in this chapter and this is a topic every year you can expect, uh, expect questions every year every year there will be a question from this properties of ratio and proportion that is the final topic of this chapter some properties of Today I will explain the properties only. Tomorrow, next class only, I will explain the questions related with this properties I am teaching you today because you have to learn it. Then only you will be able to solve the questions related with the properties of proportion, ratio and proportion. So we are having around seven properties related with the proportion. Seven properties. That means you are having a proportion given and equality of ratio is given if you have a is to b equal to c is to d if you have a ratio equal or a ratio in proportion is given then you can have some properties that properties i am going to explain this is the given quantity if a is to B equal to C is to D. Our first property is inverted law. Inverted law. Inverted law implies that the reciprocal of the ratio. That means if you are having a ratio A is to B equal to C is to D given. Then you can write inverted law implies that B is to A will be equal to D is to C. That is the first property. First property of ratio. If you are having a ratio A is to B equal to C is to D is given. Then by applying inverted to Applying the property inverted to you can say B is to A equal to D is to C. And the second property is alternando. Alternando implies that the given quantity is same. A is to B equal to C is to D. Then alternando implies that A is to C will be equal to B is to D. A is to C will be equal to B is to D. That is the second property. And the third property is component. Component. Component implies that if a ratio is given A is to B equal to C is to D. Then the ratio is A plus B is to B will be equal to C plus D is to D. C plus D is to D. That is the third property. And the fourth property is dividend. Row. Fourth property is dividend. Row. And dividend implies that A minus B is to B. A minus B is to B will be equal to C minus D is to D. Okay? And the fifth as well as the most important property that is component and dividend. Component. 
compound and dividend. You will write it as C and D. You can make it in the short form as C and D. Compound into and dividend. It says that A plus B is to A minus B will be equal to C plus D is to C minus D. A plus B is to A minus B equal to C plus D is to C minus D. And the sixth property that is convert into convert into implies that A is to A minus B will be equal to C is to C minus D. Okay. And the last property, if a pair of ratios are given, if A upon B equal to C upon D equal to E upon F equal to etc. Given. Given. Then each ratio, then the value of each ratio will be equal to Sum of antecedents support sum of consequence. Sum of antecedents A plus C plus E upon B plus D plus F. A plus C plus E upon B plus D plus F. Clear? This concept, this topic I am teaching you today because you should be familiar with this topic. Then only we will be able to do the next exercise. So, this I am teaching you today to learn into perfectly. Among that, the fifth one. This is the most important property. Component and dividend. Okay. I will give you the examples and all in the next class only. Today, you have to study, you have to do the homeworks which I have mentioned. As well as you have to study the properties, its proofs are not important, that is not required. You have to study only the property, properties of proportion, properties of ratio and proportion. The first property is inverted, that means you can revise the order with this property. I have told you the ratio, the order of the ratio is important, that means A is to B. That order is important. But if you want to change the order of the ratio by using this property. By using this property inverted only, you can change the order of the ratio. A is to B equal to C is to D. You can change it as B is to A equal to D is to C. Similarly, if you have to take the second ratio's numerator interchanging, then we will apply with the alternate. Okay. Thirdly, if we have to apply uh, adding a property, then we will apply component to subtract a property. You will apply dividend. Adding and subtracting by using component and dividend only, we are going to solve most of the problems of our last exercise. Component and dividend. So, component and dividend implies that. A plus B is to A minus B will be equal to C plus D is to C minus D. If you have gone through the previous year's question paper, you can see it is given using the properties of proportion. Solve. Using the properties of proportion. That's why I have told you this is very important. Study it perfectly. Learn it. And what is alternate the answer should be very clearly with you. What is common and should be with you. So it should be with the perfectly perfection. You have to study these all concepts. Alternate law, convertent law, dividend law, component law, component law and dividend law. And finally, this is another term. Find the value each ratio. The concept of each ratio will be equal to the sum of antecedents upon sum of consequence. Clear? Hope everything is clear. Uh, I have told you, children, we are going through typical topics. 
easiest questions are almost over we are going through typical topics if you didn't follow it daily you can have the facility to watch the video again and again if you didn't understand at present you cannot consult with the teachers directly but you can go through the videos if you didn't understand go it again and again continuously watch and learn make it clear the topics the explanation is all concepts are given in your textbook also the properties some properties of ratio and proportion that is also given so learn these properties as well as today you have the homework from question number 16 to 23 the first three questions given 16 to 23 20 and 21 one one question only that also you have to do so 16 to 23 first three questions do ask Homework in your classwork copy whatever we uh, done already whatever we have solved already that you can leave the remaining questions solve as homework plus study the properties of proportion next class we will be dealing with this properties of proportion the questions related with this properties of proportion okay hope you are clear with the concepts what I told you today the K method of solving proportion as well as I have told you taught you this properties of ratio and proportion make it clear all the topics and we will be meeting you very soon in the next class till then bye